Today is Monday the 25th of September and I am about to start my rom com with one week. And no, you didn't hear that wrong. I had the best laid plans for when I got back from Mallorca last week. I was going to go right from Wednesday to Sunday. I was going to speed run through as many books as possible. Then this happened. Well, there goes that dream. So I was basically stapled to my bed for most of last weekend. And I had a thought that I was just going to delay my rom com -a -thon. I was just going to start it this week, do it for this week instead, and like build up as much energy as I could and then be in the mood for more reading and more rom-coms because genuinely the only rom-coms that I was doing last week was watching Notting Hill about 20 times. So I have got a couple of books that I really want to do. My TBR has slightly changed mainly because I had The Sweetest Revenge by Lizzie Dent on it and I actually read that um, over like a little bit of Wednesday and Thursday. So we do need to go and read something different. But I am going to start where I was back in August with Love at First Set by Jennifer Duggan. Jennifer Duggan. Jennifer whatever her last name is. I was genuinely really enjoying this. But I got to about 150 pages in before Brie gave us a new um, prompt for the Amazing Readathon. So I had to leave it down for a little bit. But now I'm ready to go back to it. I actually asked her if, for the sports romance, I should do Love It For Set or if I should do Cleat Cute by Meryl Wilsner, which I actually got a copy of over, like, last week. And her answer was just yes. So if I can fit in both books over this week, I will really, really give it a go. And then I will use the Cleat Cute book as my sports romance. And I think it's also, like, a light shaving of enemies to lovers on top. And then I will just use Love at First Set as like a friends to lovers book. The one that is actually tripping me up a bit at the moment is the fake dating. I don't know what to read for fake dating, which is confusing because fake dating is my favourite of the tropes. But I don't know where to go. I'm kind of looking at my bookshelf and thinking there's so many options that I'm overwhelmed with choice. I'm also looking through my script and I'm overwhelmed with choice. And I'm also got um, a Libby subscription to my local library here in Berlin. And there's a plethora of choice there too. So who knows? Let's see what I end up doing. Let's figure out where we're gonna go. And yesterday, my smut university hoodie arrived just in time for me to get started on this week. Um, there's construction work happening somewhere outside, so if you hear, like, a saw, we're just gonna have to deal with it. I am finished my first book of the readathon. I finished Love at First Set. Um, I listened to the audiobook while I was at work yesterday and this morning, and I have finished it. And I think it's gonna get maybe, like, a three and a half to a four. It was good. It was fine, but there were a couple of things that didn't really stand out to me as much as I kind of hoped that they would. It was a good book. I think the smutty scenes that we had, they were fine, but they were also a little bit clunky. I didn't really love Kara's brother James. I felt like he was a little bit kind of intrusive in Lizzie and Kara's relationship. He had this kind of unique situation of knowing both of them probably equally well, which was a little bit difficult then for him to kind of balance out between the two. And the epilogue is basically textbook definition of lesbians. And it was a good book. I enjoyed it. But I don't think it's going to get as high a rating as Brie probably wanted me to give it. But I'm going to go on to another book. 
I am going to go on to Teach Me by Olivia Dade. It's the group book. I'm going to use this for the Grumpy Sunshine prompt. <clears throat> and I'm also physically, somewhere over there, reading The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. I read her YA novel Better Than The Movies. I read that one during the Amazing Readathon and I really enjoyed it. And her adult books feels a little different right now. This is about Hallie and Jack who have a one night stand together, meet on a dating app, and they're just about to go on separate dates at the moment and like tell each other what the other dates are about. Don't particularly understand that point. I do think why have they matched on a dating app and are then going on dates with other people rather than with each other? Let's see where that goes. And I think they're going to be each other's wingman for quite a lot of this book. I'm intrigued, I'm interested. Let's see where we end up. while I'm waiting for my bus. Today is Thursday. Um, I'm about 60 pages in to the Love Wager because yesterday evening and Tuesday evening were super busy so I didn't get a whole lot of time uh, to actually read the book. But I am a little bit further into Teach Me and I'm genuinely really enjoying that one. I really love that both characters are in their 40s, they're a little bit older, both of them are divorced, one of them is a single parent, both of them are teachers. It is a world that I genuinely know a lot of both of my parents were slash are teachers but today is a special day today is my second anniversary of moving to berlin so today as well as not having time to read this book i am going out for dinner this evening as a little kind of a ritual of welcome to berlin kind of thing I had a shower last night when I came home from work and I need another one because I am pumping sweat. I am all made up and I'm all dolled up. I'm actually just about to go filming. I've got my setup just over there and I've got the books that I need to talk about that are just on the bed beside me. So you're going to see that video quite soon. But it is my penultimate day of rom com -a and I need to finish a goddamn book. I actually did finish Teach Me and I had a really good time with it. I really enjoyed the discussion about teaching as a whole. I grew up in a family with two teachers, so I know quite a lot about the stress that teachers can go through. I know quite a lot about the situations that they can be in. My parents actually also met on the job as teachers. So that little added bonus was also really nice to think about. But it's a very US centric book, obviously because Olivia is from the US. So there's a lot of things that they have over there that we don't have that did alienate me a little bit. We, for example, don't have AP classes. You have higher level and you have ordinary level and then you are separated into the two of those. But I did like higher level Irish, for example, and I was really good at Irish. But that didn't mean that I went on then to another over that level of Irish for my leaving cert. I just did the higher level paper. I also really loved that both of the characters were in their 40s, they were divorced, Martin was a single father, and there was a lot of balancing that as you were talking about him and Rose getting to know each other and figuring out their relationship. Third act conflict, didn't love it, thought it was a little bit kind of out of left field. I actually felt like I had to go back and listen to it again to figure out, wait, why are they separating this time? I don't understand why it is that they're not seeing each other again. Overall, I really loved this one. I think I gave it a high three and a half to a four stars. And I think this is the strongest group read that we've chosen so far. I think this time we've actually managed to pick a group book that most of us have enjoyed. What is the situation for today? The situation for today is that I need to finish The Love Wager. I'm on page 125 and the narrative itself is only like 290 pages. So I think it's possible that I can finish it today 
and get it finished for September, which I need to do because it is also my buzzword thon book for September and I left that killingly late. And I don't know what to do then after that. I actually don't have any ideas for a second chance romance, which is not surprising because of the tropes that are on the list, second chance romance is my least favorite. It's one that I don't generally tend to reach for. It's one that I'm not usually looking forward to reading. So I don't know where I'm gonna go. I don't know what I'm gonna pick up for a second chance romance. Maybe I just won't do it. But I think so far, when I get the Love Wager finished, I will have four of the prompts ticked off. So I will be graduating with honours, at least. I might even make the Dean's List if I've got the four prompts. So let's see if we can get maybe a fifth one set in stone. I've got a couple of things to do around the house. I've got some cleaning to do. I'm also going to be going to the grocery store later on. Um, so I will have a chance to read an audiobook and see if there's one that I can find on Scribes or on my library or on my other library and see if there's something that I can pick out that will get me a little bit over the line. Sunday night. It is for me the end of rom com -a um, Let me remember how to knit um, while I tell you about how rom com this week went for me. I will be looking down for quite a lot of this and I apologize because I'm still at like the beginning of my knitting journey. I did knit for a little while when I was younger and then everything kind of left my head. You know when you have a skill and you haven't used it in like a really long time. Well that's me in knitting right now. I've completely forgotten how to cast off. Casting on was always fine um but i used to have my mom cast off for me and i live on my own in a different country so she's not here to cast off for me anymore so i have to remind myself how to do that anyway wrong comment on i got distracted i have finished the week with three books the week started out pretty strong i gave four stars to love at first set i really enjoyed that one um, I think Brie was kind of waiting for me to say five stars with this one, but it ended up being a pretty strong and solid four, which we're happy with. We're good with that. It's very chaotic bisexuals. I really enjoyed it. Um, there were a couple of things though that I didn't love about it. And then we went on to Teach Me and I had a great time with that. Of course, because I had, you know, the whole, my parents being teachers, having met at work, having met while they were teaching and that little kind of connection but also felt a little bit alienated because it was very heavily based on the US and I went to school in Ireland so I didn't really know a whole lot about what the intricacies of an AP teaching was but I really enjoyed the kind of prom talk about this book because something that you see a lot in American media and the stuff that we get over here is of course from. So we're really familiar with that as a concept and I really loved watching that play out. Um, also really loved about that book that both of the characters were a little bit older, one of them had a child, both of them were divorced. There was a really great discussion in that book as well, I don't think I mentioned this, about their previous relationships and about what went wrong for them, what they were looking for in the next one, what they didn't want to tolerate anymore and I think that that's a really healthy conversation for a couple to have especially early on in your relationship it might feel a little bit awkward when you're still kind of getting to know each other and you're telling your now partner oh by the way I was cheated on in a previous relationship so I'm a little bit worried about these kind of things or oh my previous partner was abusive so these kind of things can trigger me but I also think that it's a really important conversation to have if you want your relationship to be successful and then let's talk about where we went last night so last night I finished The Love Wager, did finish it within September, we're in October now, um, I did finish it within September and it was a book <laughs> and it exists and guess what, I read it. It was a time. There were a lot of kind of repetitions in this book that I didn't really love, didn't really gel with me. I think I even mentioned one of them and that was that within three pages you are finding out twice that Jack, the male main character, was the sister to Olivia who was the bride at the wedding that we had been to in the first like chapter or the prologue or very early on very early doors in the book 
And that just kind of felt a little bit odd to me. I felt like it was kind of geared towards the audiobook readers among us who don't have the luxury of going back a page. They might have to skip back on like Audible or Script or Libby or whatever it is that they are listening to the book on. That they'd have to skip back like 20, 30 seconds or however long it was. And there were a couple of things as well that just didn't gel with me. I didn't really love Jack, the main male character. I felt like there were a couple of things that he did that just didn't sit well with me overall. Hallie, I preferred. She was the female male character and I really liked her. She had a kind of a slower burn in realising that she was into Jack. Um, but also there was another relationship that she was in that I felt I would have loved to have seen that actually go somewhere. I would have loved to have seen something happen between Hallie and this other person. I really wanted to have their relationship, you know, go the distance. Also, this book was kind of the manual on how to miscommunicate with your partner. There were so many times that I just wanted to sit down, put my head in my hands and say, hey, you guys really need to have a conversation with each other about how you're feeling. But then I probably would say we would not have any book. So I think at the end of it all, we've got four of the prompts ticked off, which means that we are graduating with honors. So congratulations to me. We got there in the end. COVID did not dampen my spirits too much for this week, thankfully. I was a little bit kind of still hazy at the start of this week, um, especially at work. Outside of like rom com -a I felt myself getting a little bit jaded at work, needing to like spend extra time doing things that would usually not take me as much time. See, also relearning how to knit. It's taking me forever to like knit one line. But I got there. I did what needed to be done and now I am ready to start my spooky reads. I've actually got my first spooky read ready to go and it's not really spooky, it's kind of spooky, but it is The Man Who Died, Twi the Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman and I'm kind of ready to say goodbye to romances now and I know that that seems very weird coming out of my mouth like the queen of the rom-com-a-thon basically, but I think it's just time to give rom-coms a break for now. Maybe find like a Halloween-y themed rom-com, maybe go in there. But for now, I am ready to read about four 80-year-olds solving crimes. So I'm going to go try to remember how to knit, have a cup of tea, and enjoy the rest of my evening. Thank you so much to everyone who joined with rom com this year. If you joined in the first week that it was actually happening, we really appreciate you having been there. We will probably be back for Christmas. I can't guarantee you anything, but we will try our best to be back for Christmas. We will more than likely be back for February for another Valentine's themed round, and we would love to see you then. If you would like to leave me a comment, but you can't think of anything that you would like to say, then please just leave me one of the heart emojis. If you want to leave me a yellow heart emoji, that would be even better. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm not going to put my thumbs up or I'll lose my place um, because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.